Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Today we are making these cute little button embellishments. But before we jump into the tutorial, I want to show you some ideas on how you can actually use them just to get your creative juices flowing and to get you excited about making them. Idea number one is to make simple little charms that you can then go ahead and attach onto your projects. Journals, spines, sides of covers and things like that. Idea number two is to glue them or sew them directly onto your covers. So this is a cover I'm making, there's going to be something in that pocket. And then I have my little embellishment that I can, for example, glue directly onto my cover somewhere, anywhere, you know, something like that. Or perhaps something like this. I could have a little pouch like that with a little button embellishment. Or here's another cover that I'm making, I mean really anywhere they go on it looks really nice here's another cover in the making and then simply adding a little embellishment like this sewing it on or gluing it on makes it look really really fabulous makes a pop just adds another little interest piece to your journal you can perhaps have something like this just looks really nice Idea number three is to use them as journal closures. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do all of this, but this is just sharing the ideas. You can see I'm making that into a journal closure and it's a removable little embellishment. And then over here, perhaps it can be used as a pocket too. This one is sewn directly onto some stretchy lace and that's also serving as a journal closure that can just be slipped off. Perfect, cute little headband too, I guess. Idea number four is to use it as part of your binding. So that's there permanently because you bind it in together with the signature. And of course, I will show you how to do that in the tutorial. Idea number five is to use them as spine embellishments. So instead of binding them in, you would simply be attaching them. Instead of a little tassel or something like that, you'll be attaching them to the spine like that or even to the front cover, something like this in the corner. Idea number six is to tie them directly onto little pouches. For example, this is a little bag full of buttons and that's a perfect little embellishment for a bag full of buttons. Or for example, you can do something like this. Here's a little paper bag. Let's pretend I've got some stuff in there, some buttons. Let's put a little doily up the top like this and then you can do something like this and just tie it at the back. So we're basically just tying them on to things or something like this. How cute does that look? Another idea that popped into my mind as I was filming the tutorial, it's not really relevant to what we do on this channel, but look at this. How about little cute little bracelets? Pop it onto some stretchy lace and you have a cute little thing. Those are just a few little ideas. I hope they have piqued your interest. So without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. For this project, you will need some flat buttons, all different sizes if you have, small, large. And you will also need some shank buttons, which are these buttons that have the protruding bit at the back. You will also need some cut out circle shapes. You can cut these out by hand and the size, it really doesn't matter. It all depends on the size of your buttons as well. You will also need a hot glue gun or if you don't have one of these, then a really strong heavy duty glue such as E600, which I don't have, but that's an alternative to the hot glue gun. And lastly, you will need some sort of a non-stick surface. I'm using this cereal bag liner, plastic bag will do, something that's non-stick, perhaps some baking paper or something like that. We will be making two variations of the same thing. One of them is where we have this circle at the back so that you can, you know, if you're making a charm, you want to have a nice, neat back. And also if you're gluing it onto something, onto a journal cover or whatnot, you want to have something to pop your glue onto. You want to have an even surface, I guess, which is where these little circles come in that I mentioned before. And the other var variation is this one here. If you're wanting to use it for a journal closure or tying onto things, we're leaving the shank free so that you have the option of threading something through. So we will start off with making this one here the one with the circle at the back. 
All right, my nonstick surface is down and I'm just going to show you before I actually do it. Basically what's happening over here is all I'm doing is popping four buttons down together like this. And then I'm going to put a shank button in the middle like this. However, there's a few different things you need to keep in mind. First of all, check your shanks at the back. So if you can see these two different ones that I have here, one is really, really short and one is protruding out quite a bit. So when I pop this one down, I know it's hard to see from here, but this button, it's not sitting flat on top of my buttons. It's protruding up. If I pop my short shank button down, it sits right on top level with the other four buttons. If I put the long shank button down, there's a huge space and that's not going to work. So the long shank buttons are the buttons that we're going to use for variation number two. And you also can't do this with the long shank buttons because it's not flat. You want this backing to be really flat if it's something that you're going to be using for gluing down onto a surface. All right, so we're leaving the long shank buttons for later. We are going to use that as well, but we will come back to it. So first let's do this one here. So for the flat back one, you take out your little circle shape that you've punched out or cut out and you pop it down. It's always best practice straight away to get into the habit of looking at the holes in the button, because if you're going to be using it as a charm, you want to have those holes kind of straight up, not side on like this, because then you can't kind of put your little thing that you're going to use to attach on, if that makes sense. So I'll show you here, you can see how it's, the holes are straight up. So just keep that in mind. It's going to look something like this. I'm just double checking before I get my hot glue gun out. It's going to look like this, okay? So now I'm going to get my hot glue gun, pop a little bit of glue there. And another thing to keep in mind that that will come with uh, practice, I guess, is try not to get that hot glue all over the place. So what I do, instead of just popping it flat down, I kind of move it in a little bit. And there's my button on. That's number one. Now I might do the one directly below it. trying to keep those holes aligned. I'll show you in a moment. I'm just going to do this, my third button. And the fourth button. And that's what it's looking like so far, really quite messy, kind of all over the place, but the back is looking okay. And now for the final button, what I'm going to do is fill in this hole inside with the hot glue. And that's going to help keep all of my buttons kind of glued on as well. Because in all honesty, hot glue isn't the greatest at holding things together long term. So you can see I've got quite a bit. I need to work quick here. Now I'm going to pop that right there in the middle and push it down and just hold it in place for a little bit. And there we go. That one's done. So with this one, I really would have preferred the orientation to be this way. So what I would do, see how I didn't, I don't have these buttons this way. If I had put them this way, then I could you know, have the orientation any way I want. But anyway, this is how I would apply my charm through that button and that's kind of how it would look. Or if I wanted to glue it directly down onto my project, I have this beautiful flat surface here at the back and I can just go ahead and glue it down. Whereas it's, it's kind of hard trying to do this without the back because then you have all sorts of things happening at the back, right? That's why we have this beautiful flat surface that's going to help us glue it down somewhere. I have this roll that I bought from eBay. It says handmade with love. It was really quite inexpensive and luckily the sh the size of this circle is exactly the same, well just about exactly the same as these circle shapes that I have. So then when I glue that on it kind of looks a little bit more professional I guess you can say at the back. 
Next I'm going to do perhaps something like this where we're using different sizes of buttons. If I'm being perfectly honest, it's actually much easier to do this with two large buttons and then two smaller buttons which can fit onto that circle a lot easier. So that's what I might do next. Now in case someone wants to know, people usually do, I'm using this punch for my circle and it's one inch uh, diameter. So because all of our buttons are different, you might run into some issues as you go along so perhaps we'll see what will happen now this button has a slightly larger shank than the, than the previous one so when i put it down it doesn't quite sit completely flat but i'm going to use it anyway i somehow made it work on this one here so pop your buttons down just so you know kind of where they're going to go and then we start apply my first button down all right, we're going on the next button, applying my hot glue, next button. Now I'm doing the two little buttons on the side, so just to get some glue on there. So I'm just kind of pushing that glue a little bit in so it's not seeping outwards. It's really difficult doing this up close, but I'm gonna try again. So apply some hot glue not too much you don't want it to go all over the place get your button kind of go down and in so this is what we have and notice how i have space there left not the whole section is not filled with glue because that hot glue hardens very quickly and then i wouldn't be able to pop, pop the shank in there if it's completely filled up with glue that's already dry so the next step is to fill it up with glue and then the shank is going to sink right in and then press down all right so that was difficult working so close so you might get little bits of glue that kind of you know these stretchy bits just try and make it as neat as you possibly can remove you know if anything's kind of too obvious so that's looking pretty good the reason why you want to have something non-stick underneath is because sometimes you're bound to have some glue seeping out and that's okay you know it's just the nature of the project you i really don't like that look but it really doesn't matter so when you have a non-stick surface down you can very easily peel it off all right so we have two done so far and it's really quite easy and simple very easy concept and once you have your hot glue gun out and you have your buttons ready, you can go ahead and play around, see what works, see what doesn't work, and just glue stuff down. Well, not stuff, buttons in particular. You can even do three buttons and a shank button in the middle. It doesn't have to be four. It doesn't have to look like a... This kind of look like a flowers. Whereas this one, you know, three buttons only because I couldn't fit four onto the circle. So... You just see what kind of buttons you have and you go for it. I'm demonstrating with buttons today, but if you don't have any shank buttons, you can just use anything in the middle. Uh, something, I just pulled this out, but something like this, for example, as your little middle there, or um, this probably doesn't go, but it was right there on top of my box. So I pulled it out just to demonstrate that your middle doesn't actually have to be a button. It can be something flat like this that you pop on top. It might even work even better. If I was to do that, for example, I would hit fill the, this whole space up with glue and that would, I believe, keep those buttons in place even better. And then hide that, you know, glue section with a little center. This one's too small to cover the hole, so I would have to use smaller buttons. You can probably see it a little bit better on this doily. See how when you use smaller buttons, that hole kind of is smaller and then your little centerpiece doesn't have to be overly large and you pop it on top and look at that absolutely gorgeous all right so those are the flat back ones and we're going to come back to this when i show you the next variation we'll come back to this and i'm going to show you how you can actually apply it on a journal closure like how would you actually do it right and also i'll show you how to bind it into the spine of the book but now i wanted to show you the second variation which is this one here where the shank is free to use for 
you know, whatever you want to use it for, you have that option to tie it onto something. So this option we're going to do slightly differently. So choose your shank button. I'm going to go perhaps with this one here. I might go with something like this or perhaps something like this, maybe something like this. Let's see. So I have my buttons and now this is how we do this one. You want to have your larger or your thicker buttons on the side of the shank like this. This is a bit of a nightmare to show. So you see your shank here. You want to have these buttons or larger ones, thicker ones, whatever. You want to have them here next to the shank. So we're going to be gluing the buttons directly onto the back of the shank button. So, okay, here we go. First button. I'm keeping those holes. There we go and press down. The holes could have been in a straighter line. All right, now turn to the other side, apply glue and my button number two. So as you can perhaps see, first of all, I'm pushing the hot glue in so that I don't have any hot glue seeping out here, which is going to make it look messy. And this looks quite nice already, doesn't it? So I'm kind of popping the button down and pushing it in. And I'm being mindful of not closing that opening, that shank in there. All right, so now next thing we're going to do is glue these buttons on. There isn't a whole lot of space here. The less space you have, the uh, less secure the button will be. So what I try to do is get a little bit of glue onto the side buttons as well. So when I push this one in, it's being glued down and also on the sides of these two. Does that make sense? I think so. All right, let's get that hot glue down a little bit there to the sides. Really messy. Oh, well. Pop that down and push in. This is what the back looks like. You can see that we have glue that's uh, visible, but you can also see that that shank is left open. I didn't fill that whole space with glue because if I did, then we wouldn't be able to thread anything through. Now the moment of truth, is there any glue seeping at the front? No glue seeping at the front. Perfect. So now what we have here is a little opening and then you get your ribbon or you get your twine or whatever you have in your possession. I'm going to use this one. Thread it through any way you know how. Here we go. And the beauty of this is also that it hides the ugliness of the glue at the back, right? So that's what this one looks like. And now I can very easily use this to tie it onto my project. And then there's this one. So there's that shank. You can see a little bit of glue. So you might get some glue seeping out and it's just going to happen, but it's no big deal. These are handmade product projects. So it just is what it is with hot glue. So there we have it. That's the second variation, very easy and simple. But I wanted to mention, of course, when you're gluing your buttons down, first of all, don't glue the button upside down. So don't glue it like this. You wanna have all of your buttons the right way up. I'm pretty sure that you know what I mean. And of course you already know this. Another thing with this second method is if your shank is really, really shallow like this one, you can see it's tiny. It might be difficult to have four buttons on there because then one of the uh, buttons or two of the buttons are completely going to close that opening. So use the shallow shanks for variation number one where you want to have the flat surface at the back. Keep those shallow shanks and then these more deeper. You can see the difference here. Keep them for this type of thing. Okay, let's do one more quick one. You know, just double checking if these buttons are going to work and they look like they are. There's my hot glue, there's my button. And in, and then there's no seepage here at the front. Popping the button down and pushing in. That's looking quite okay. They're a little bit crooked, but it's okay. Button number three, here we go. Down and in looking good so far and button number four there's the back there's the opening so we left that nice and free and then you can very easily thread something through like this and then you have 
you have that happening so you can tie it onto any, anything all right so this one here is actually a good example of a tiny little bit of a fail actually i wouldn't call it a fail but it's something to keep in mind when i was gluing the first two buttons on these two i glued them on crooked so if you can see here they're kind of like more to this side right and what happens then is i have less space for this button and you can clearly see it see how this one is closer to the shank and this one is further out it's really no big deal however what this means is that this button is not very secure it only has a tiny tiny little bit of glue holding it in place and if you're using hot glue hot glue is notorious for being able to be snapped i could very easily snap this one on in all honesty i could probably very easily snap all of them off but this one would be much easier to kind of snap off so you want to have them straight like that you don't want to have them kind of crooked like that because then look at all this beautiful space here and then look at all this barely any space there can't fit a button there and when it comes to space let's say you want to do only three buttons in that case you use large buttons because look at this i can only fit three of these large buttons i'll show you on this one here so you can see that small shank button in the middle and of course it's tiny and i can only fit uh, three of the large ones that are there's no space to fit the fourth one why not just do two like that that would look quite fun all right so that's the two variations that i wanted to show you variation number one you can see the back is completely flat and you can beautify the back or you can glue it onto another surface this one here we have that shank that's protruding out so it'll be difficult to glue that down onto a flat surface because it is not flat so the variation number two is best for stringing something through like this oh i just had a thought look at this not that i would ever in a million years wear this as a bracelet but what a fun idea look at that it just crossed my mind and why not like it's just not my thing but how cool does this look <gasps> oh i really love this idea maybe on some stretchy something anyway so what i want to do next is go into a little bit more detail on how you would use these all right so making the charms is pretty self-explanatory you have all of these holes that you can attach something to so in this case i'm just popping a bulb pin through and there's my little charm you can attach a large jump ring for example and then use that to attach it onto something else or something like this you can use a piece of wire which is what i did here and i wrapped it around added some beads on there and added this little uh, clasp claw whatever it's called and that you know can be attached onto something very self-explanatory easy and simple you can use embroidery floss and do it that way you know you have all those holes to work with but what i wanted to show you specifically is how to bind it into your cover I don't actually have a signature ready for this cover so we're just pretending we're pretending that i have my signature and i'm binding it into my book so we're starting here from the middle binding my signature in i'm now here at, on the outside i grab my little button embellishment and this is where it's important to have your holes aligned you don't want them kind of going that way and that way it would still work but you know you start from underneath the button you go back in the first button then your top button you go in through the first hole and back underneath the button and this is what you have so far that's what it looks like there and that's what it looks like at the back and now back to binding we go back in through that top hole i'm doing a three hole pamphlet stitch my needle is now on the inside just like that so that's now in place if you wish you can apply a little bit of glue on the back here so that it's kind of glued to the spine as well but i think just sewing it on is perfectly fine here we go and now here's my pretend signature now i'm going down to the bottom hole I'm on the outside again and now I have to go back in through this hole so this doesn't have to be tight yet so I'm gonna go back in there we go so this is not tight yet 
get rid of my needle and now is where we kind of just the same way that you would tighten your signature into your book and there it is really uh, i mean it's so simple i'm sure you already knew how to do this you this is the same way you would string anything onto your cover beads buttons i mean we've done this before if you've seen my previous or one of my previous videos here i have some handmade beads i have a tutorial on these as well i'm going to link it down below and then here it's just buttons singular buttons that are threaded through this half spine i'll link this tutorial down below as well it's a little bit of a different type of binding it's not a three hole pamphlet stitch it's just wrap around but the concept is the same we're just simply threading it through during the binding process and now that is permanently on my journal well not permanently because i don't have a signature in there yet but that's what i'm going to do on this one i want to show you these journal closures next all i did here is i got some stretchy lace and i just sewed it onto the stretchy lace uh, i'm not very good at this sewing stuff i'm not very neat so it's not looking great i'm sure you guys can do a much better job than me but all I did is sewn the lace shut first on my sewing machine and then I went ahead and used those holes, you see, button holes, and sewed it directly onto that lace. Really, really simple. And there's my little slip on and slip off closure for this journal. This one here, pretty much exactly what we have done in the binding were not binding it into the book we're just kind of popping it onto some stretchy elastic like this or it doesn't have to be stretchy i guess you want to be able to kind of put it on and take it off your journal you start from underneath then you go through the top then you go through the shank this one is facing the wrong way but it doesn't matter it will still work see it kind of looks like that at the back and we're going back from the underside to the top and back down and there we go okay then you wrap it around your journal where you want it how tight you want it and you know you tie a knot at the back i'm not really tying a knot i'm just demonstrating here and then you have this as your closure that can be slipped on and off easily and because it's elastic it gives you room to grow uh, i mean i haven't got anything bound into this yet but there's that so these ones that i've done previously they have that shank bit at the back okay i admit the back doesn't look very pretty but perhaps there's a way to hide that i mean it doesn't really bother me but this one here i did it with the flat version and I thought that's pretty cool because, all right, here's a pen. And then it can, it can be a little pen holder on your journal. It's just an idea. That's kind of what it looks like, you see? And it's not falling out. Unless I like really go mad. And that closure, of course, I love this idea. That closure, of course, can be a little pocket for something. We can have a little pen holder. That looks really cute as a little gift. Imagine popping this into a little see-through cellophane bag. It's so cute. Now, next, if I wanted to add this, for example, onto this journal, I could just glue it down. You know, it's easier to glue paper to fabric rather than plastic to fabric. So that's why I like having this paper at the back. But I would, in, I would most likely just go ahead and sew that on. And I've got those beautiful buttonholes. And of course, I can use all four sides and just sew it directly onto my cover. If I wanted to put it onto a spine, first of all, I want to have a thick spine. Something like this. When the buttons are protruding to the sides, I wouldn't bother attaching that to a journal like this. I want to have a wide spine journal like this so that my button is kind of within the spine and the way i would attach this is perhaps i would do something like this here uh, i've done this in my one of my previous tutorials making these journals in 15 minutes and you can see i love buttons by the looks of it and basically all i did is two little holes and then i put a jump ring through the holes and then i attached you know this to that it would even look cool here we go something like this right 
but instead of it being on the front, which would also work, it would be on the spine. I think it would look really nice on the front cover too. In this case, I didn't use ribbon. I just used embroidery floss to attach the button embellishment to the button bag. And there we have it, a whole lot of button embellishments. I think I covered everything. I hope I didn't overcomplicate a really simple concept. Please let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I hope you feel inspired. I hope you feel like you want to go and you want to make some right away. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!